Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to flash the USA unbranded firmware on a carrier locked or carrier unlocked Samsung phone. So let's get straight into it. Alright, so here I have a Galaxy S24 Plus that was formerly bought from T-Mobile and now has been unlocked. So instead of having the T-Mobile bloatware on the device anymore, the T-Mobile boot up screen, I want to go ahead and install the USA Unlocked firmware so I can go ahead and remove all the bloatware and all the unnecessary apps that are installed here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is check your model number. So go into settings, uh, go to about device and then into software information. I don't really want to show you going through that because it will reveal some um, private things on the in the settings app here. But basically you're going to scroll down once you're in software make sure you see your One UI version, Android version. Scroll down to where it says service provider software version and you should see your model number here so mine says sm-s 926u so when it says u at the end instead of u1 uh, u means it's uh, carrier branded uh, the u1 means it's carrier unlocked so we're going to go ahead and flash the u1 firmware and as you can see underscore tmb so you, you see a tmb 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 uh, tmb stands for t-mobile if you have an at and device it will be att if you have a Verizon device, it will be VZW, and you will just see that right here. So um, the steps don't change much between carriers because you're still going to install the same USA Unlocked firmware. So now once you know what phone you have, you're going to need to know this model number here. So mine's SM-S926U, and we're going to go ahead and navigate over to this website here called SAMFW.com. I'm going to go ahead and link it in the description. And once you're here, we're going to want to go ahead and go to Other Tools and download the Odin here. Go ahead and just download the Odin and then you're gonna go ahead and want to search up, either you can get the Samsung USB drivers here or you can get them from the official website and that's just Samsung USB drivers. You could just go ahead and look that up here and right here and you're gonna to need to download these as well as Odin patched. And I've already done that. So once you go ahead and install those two files there, all right, so now that you have the two files, um, go ahead and install. Just go through the setup wizard of the USB drivers. It's very straightforward. You just download, open, um, and hit next, 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 install. So once you have those, you should also have your Odin. Go ahead, right-click on it, and go to 7-zip, WinRAR, or just um, extract it through the default Windows one. And just extract it, and you should go ahead and get SAMFW underscore Odin 3 V314.4. And once you have that, you should just be able to see these files here, the DLL files, INI files, and the EXE. Just go ahead and click on the executable file. And it will tell you to please be sure to delete your Google account on the device before we go ahead and go through this. And the Samsung account. So make sure that those are deleted as well as the pin lock being removed. As you can see here, pin lock removed, Google accounts removed. Uh, it's fairly easy to do. You're just gonna wanna go ahead and go to the settings and then search accounts, manage accounts in here. And then in manage accounts, you're just gonna to wanna to find your Google accounts and delete your Google accounts there. So I'm hiding that because I don't wanna show you the Google accounts. So we can go ahead and go back out of that and we can just go home for now. So go ahead and click okay on this once you've deleted your Google and Samsung account off the device. And you should see Odin 3.14.4 downloaded and running on your system here. So now, once you have Odin running, we can go ahead and go back to the SAMFW page. And right here where it says enter device name or model code, you're gonna to want to enter your device and model code. So mine was SM-S926U. So go ahead and search that. Uh, just search your model number, it, uh, like how I showed before in the settings. And you're gonna to wanna to add a one at the end after the U. The one um, signifies the USA unlocked firmware. And once you're in here, we could go ahead and sift through these. And you're going to want to install the XAA firmware, as that is the fully unbranded United States firmware. So once we're there, you should see a lot of files here. Now just go ahead and install the one with the latest security patch. So for this device, it's um, May 1st, 2025. So I'm going to go ahead and click that there. Scroll down and just hit download on browser. And this may take five to 10 minutes, so be patient because it is a large file, 11.87 uh, gigabytes. So just have some patience and wait. 
All right, and now that the file has downloaded the firmware files, go ahead and go to your file explorer and go to the SAMFW firmware that you just installed. Right click on it and extract it with either 7-zip, the Windows one, or WinRAR. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract it here. And now this will also take uh, some time as well. So again, be patient. All right, so now that the firmware has been installed, we can go ahead and open Odin. And now that it has been extracted, go ahead and double click on the folder here. And you should see all of these. So what we're gonna want to do is go ahead and grab the bootloader file and drag that over to the bootloader section on the Odin 3. So BL goes in BL and then AP goes to AP. Now AP is the biggest file, so it will take some time to transfer over here, uh, just a couple seconds or so. All right, and now that AP has been moved over, go ahead and move over the CP file. And go ahead and move over the CSC file. We do not want to use the home CSC. So the difference between the CSC and the home CSC is the home CSC will keep all of your data. Now, doing uh, this process, you cannot keep the data. If you try to use the home CC, you will end up corrupting um, the device, basically, and it will kind of have a soft brick for a little bit. So do not use home.csc, it's not gonna work. So go ahead and drag over the CSC file here. And that's all we need there. So we just need the BL, AP, CP, CSC. So now that we have that, you can go ahead and minimize out of the File Explorer tab and we can go ahead and head over to the phone. And what you're gonna want to do now is open it up and go ahead and swipe down, hit the power icon and just power it off. And as you can see, T-Mobile logo, that will soon be removed. So now that it is off, go ahead and grab a USB cable and plug that into your computer. And what you're gonna want to do is hold down the volume down, volume up buttons at the same time and plug in the cable. And this should go ahead and boot us into download mode. And you should see this blue screen here. It's a little dim. And it just says, warning, a custom OS can cause critical problems. Now, this is not a custom OS. This is um, fully uh, official software, so you don't need to worry about this. Just go ahead and hit the volume up key here. And you should see downloading. And now we get a notification on here that our device has been added. So now you can just go ahead and click start. And it's going to go ahead and run. Now, this will take a few minutes, so be patient and wait. And now that it is done, the device should go ahead and start rebooting here into the unbranded OS. All right, and there we go. So now it has fully booted into the unbranded OS. And you could set it up just how you would set up a new device, install all your apps, maybe restore from the backup that you've had. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. I'm going to go ahead and set the device up now just to prove that we actually are on the unbranded OS. All right, and now we are in the device here, and let's go ahead and go to settings. Scroll down to about phone again, and then we'll go back down to software information here. And as you can see right here, we are now on the U1 firmware with the T-Mobile CSC. So that is a good sign there. So we do have a T-Mobile SIM inserted, so that's why we have the T-Mobile CSC. It automatically changes. But the entire device is now unbranded. As you can see, no T-Mobile bloatware has been installed at all, just the default Samsung apps. And there is no T-Mobile boot up screen, as you can see. If I go ahead and try to shut the device down here. As you can see here, shutting off, no more T-Mobile shutdown screen or power up screen. So thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos. Goodbye.